Okay. So the evolution means what all we have used. First we had SAP UI fi uh, sorry, SAP GUI. Then came uh, ITS, which is Internet Transaction Services. Then we had BSP, Webdyne Pro. Then we had Web UI. And finally, we came into SAP UI 5. Yeah, this is how the evaluation is. Let me draw a quick picture how this is have been handled in earlier th earlier days. So we had SAP GUI. Okay, we had SAP GUI initially, and we have this application server, which is nothing but our uh, NetWeaver. That is what we had. So this is how the data used to interchange between application server and the GUI. So what happens is initially there is a protocol called Diag protocol. This protocol has been used to interchange the data from your uh, SAP GUI and to the application server. This is the only protocol it's been understanding. It's prior to our HTTP protocols like that. So this is in the early uh, early era of SAP, like 70s, 75s, those period it has been used. Then you would have had a question why that time itself we couldn't had a, a SAP Fiori or even web applications because that time there was nothing uh, a browser concept or even web applications concept. It has evolved later. Yeah. Then later, in order to in order not to lose the uh, customers, SAP then thought of going for browser concept to establish them in the way of browser. Okay. Then the browser concepts in 90s, early 90s, the browser concept came, but the data in the application server has to reach the browser and from the browser where we input all the data should reach back the application server, right? So for that there was a separate converter in the middle which used to do all the conversions. Yeah. So what it does is it basically converts your HTTP protocol because browser understands only HTTP protocol. So it has to convert HTTP and back to HTTP, right? So for that what it does is it hits back the server and it has to come back. So here we will be using DAG protocol only always. Yeah. So browser you will input and it goes to the application server and it comes back. So in order to convert HTTP to DAG and DAG to HTTP, this converter has been used. That's why we have this converter in middle. DAG to HTTP and HTTP to DAG. Yeah. This process is carried out in the middle. This is what we had inter internet transaction services, all the transactions, not all the transactions. Uh, this is the drawback it, it, it didn't uh, allow to stand alone in the market because only few transactions can be established. Uh, like uh, maybe I can give an example like SE11 or something like that. Uh, those kind of transactions only was established for the browser. Then not a development something like SE38 or something cannot be accessed. You, if you want to develop a program, there was nothing transaction for browser. So then came the BSP application. Yeah. BSP and Webdyne Pro. Let's see first Webdyne Pro. Webdyne Pro is a, just a combination of these two, which is actually residing, this converter will be residing within the application server. It's like a box, both will be inside. So same browser concept was used. Only thing the advantage of using uh, Webdyne Pro is, uh, it is easy to create. Much The prototyping is much faster. That's the reason Webdyne Pro was uh, in the picture and mostly we use ABAP programming only. Yeah, That is the concept and it used the MVC concept also, model view controller. And still it's in usage in terms of uh, support projects or something like that. Uh, I have not much worked on web intro. Yeah. Then uh, the problem is why this also got dropped is this browser was there, right? This browser, we're using web intro, the client uh, client side validations has been, uh, it was not able to do it. That's the problem we had in web intro. So for doing client side validation, then came the BSP application. BSP application majorly we had some few uh, uh, UI coding stuff like HTML packages were introduced for BSP and that had some huge amount of client side validations. Those things were introduced in BSP applications. Yeah. Then also again came into the picture of uh, web UI. Web UI is uh, more predominantly uh, successful in CRM applications that where they have been used uh, predominantly. So then later also uh, 
there were some advan disadvantages and advantages within uh, web UI, DSP applications and uh, WebDime Pro. Later came our uh, superhero, SAP UIFI, yeah. This, this major thing is, major disadvantage in web UI, you cannot use it in mobile. Uh, so that is the reason it came into SAP UIFI. This is more responsive, yeah. It can be, responsive means it can be used in mobile, tablet, PC, that is the thing. So hence we came into the SAP UIFI framework and with SAP UIFI framework we were able to create a theory applications. And now we came into the web programming model. And I, I will not say that, I will short, in short I will write it as APF. So because it doesn't mean that SAP UIFI has died, it will, it is, it is still there. This APF uh, in a web programming model, we have this theory elements, right? This theory elements will be using uh, SAP UI 5 framework only, but we'll not touch any of the coding in, in, in that place. So just we'll use the template, we'll consume the template and we'll uh, put our UI, UI elements there, that's it. We arrange it and we uh, display it, that's it. So still still you can use SAP UI 5 coding for that, something like uh, uh, some features are not there in a web programming model. Like example, if you want to add a map there uh, in your application, so those stuff are not being introduced by something like annotations. So we can still extend your uh, the uh, web ID application which you have deployed, you can still extend it and there you can write your own controller and view logic. That way still SAP UI UIFI is there. Okay, the major advantage is first I said uh, UI coder, project management perspective I said. You need a UI, co UI coder and backend developer, right? This is what one thing, and second, power of HANA is getting wasted, yeah? So, serious views are there, we still don't consume it, that is the one thing. And we had fury elements, this is, this. why I'm stressing is, this is like a standardized thing. See, in, in your SAP UI5 application, whoever has created, there will not be a format, uh, format in the sense, you would, have form, you would have done in one format and your colleague would have done in other format. There is no standardization. If you, if you look into our SAP GUI, there will, be, um, there will be an ALV in your sales order screen and also in purchase order screen. While seeing that, you'll easily recognize it's an ALV, right? So such kind of standardization was not even followed in SAP UIFI. So in order to bring everything into a picture, yeah, that is the standardization we say using theory elements. In order to look, when you develop some app, a transactional app or read-only app, it should look the same altogether in wherever you open, even in purchase order, sales order, you should understand what kind of template is being followed. That's the reason we are stressing for this programming model. Yeah. This is how uh, that programming model has evolved.